everybody, and how are you doing? Welcome back to the Midwest R6. I'm here with Kimchi, and I believe this is our second cast. How are you doing, Kimchi? I am tired. I haven't been sleeping because I'm being a bit dumb in the head, so headaches. Very fun. Yeah, I mean, I've been keeping myself a bit busy. I just got myself a new reverse osmosis water system I've been playing around with, and let me tell you, that thing eats up water. But hey, it works. I just did a pH test on it. It's working uh, pretty well. But coming up for tonight, we've got a best of three. St. Ambrose University versus Musk. That's not their full name. I genuinely am not sure how to pronounce it. I already asked the team. They're not sure either, so not playing that game. Feel free to correct me as always. But what I will not be corrected on, because I nail these on the head every time, it's going to be the ad reads, folks. First kill. Watch out for tonight's first kill presented by Buy Blue Light. Buy Blue Light helps gamers enhance their performance while protecting their vision. Their specialized glasses protect eyes from buy blue or blue light risk while maintaining necessary screen time and display preferences, ensuring both eye health and optimal gaming. Top five, ready to show off your insane or clumsy highlights from your Midwest R6 match. Send them to at Midwest R6 on Twitter or X and Discord to potentially be featured. And with that being said, let's check out those top five clips from last week, folks. That's my bad. Yeah, dude, the blonde kid. Well, one's in the hall. What the fuck? Oh, my dad. One's in the hall, too. Like, I didn't know. Nice. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's hurt. He's dead, dead. Dead. Oh. Good kill. 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 Good One's in marble, I'll load. That's like you. Yeah, there may be another. Play your life, okay? That's a few All right, one garage, oh, and then the the... Main, 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 Oh, main. she's up garage. Last two main. One marble, and then easily come back. 40 seconds left. Keep watching. Yeah. Okay, uh, last one could be up there as well. Trying to get the fuser. Could also come garage. I'm, I'm, swing, shitting, I'm shitting on the garage floor. Yeah, I knew oh, it. Geez. Why did you tell I me to do this? Those are some outstanding clips, and I love the Mozzie and Buck plays, especially the top two being both Mozzie outstanding. I mean, when I used to play Siege, I'm thinking to get back into it with the new season, looking pretty hype. But those are some those are some pretty good shots, I gotta admit. Kimji, take it away with our rosters. All right, to kick us off, we got St. Ambrose University's rosters. We got a roster singular. We got Fleegs, Cipher, Brapton, Doobie, and boot and you can see those green kdas is a very good sign of hopefully things to come a team that is, can be aggressive but also knows how to stay safe and stay alive yeah definitely some uh very uh killer kds there if i do say so myself but looking at the most valuable player of these five that is going to be doobie with a 1.82 KD, 62.93 rating, 28% SRV, and 80 total kills. Found our clutch player. That's going to be Doobie. But coming up next with Musk. Or I'm sorry, their quote. I'm already screwing this up. That's going to be from Brapton. And it's going to be, Chrome on my, on my body, call me the man of steel. I don't know what that means, but outstanding i'm sure that means something of confidence right good job brapton <laughs> <laughs> good job coming up next we've got okay i'm gonna try my hardest here musk and gum black that's gonna be z mart cheese curl reserve luchi oh luchi that's my best guess and j ball also some very heavy kds although you've got your fifth player j ball is at 0.85 but 
I think that's a good thing. And the reason why I say that is you're always going to have that fifth player who's, you know, a little bit struggling a bit, but 0.85 is not that bad. So honestly, you're doing just fine, J-Ball, and we look forward to seeing you in the <laughs> next match. But let's take a look at the MVP from uh, Muskingum. It's Zemart 245 KD is absolutely filthy, but you can see the kills. They're only 49, but a rating of 67.23 and an SRV of 43%. So uh, is taking Warden's advice to heart. Uh, I don't remember the exact quote. It's something uh, prone gets you home. There you go. Yeah, I mean, even if, you know, you don't have the most amount of kills, I mean, 49 in comparison to 80, what matters is with a KD that high, that means that Zmart usually doesn't come in until it's really down for the count. And when Zmart decides to show up, he's going to have a lot of impact. So this is a player you're going to want to keep an eye on just ever so subtly as the rounds go on, because you'll see him show up at just the right moment, most likely. And a quote from musking gum as well and that will be cheese curl the goat Good i was reserved curl. the captain yeah that's my I question mean, hey the captains want to speak up let them cook captain let wants to be the reserve go ahead <laughs> yeah exactly but uh let's take a look at these map bands let's see what we've got going on for tonight folks starting off it's going to be clubhouse with san ambrose's pick then chalet and for the decider Cafe. What are we thinking about these maps here? Please stop picking Cafe as a cider. Just put it early. I always want to cast Cafe. It's just such a fun map to watch teams try to work through. And to see it as the decider, so we possibly don't see it, so it does suck. But Clubhouse Chalet, still two very solid maps and should be a good match ahead of us. Oh, yeah. And I mean, Cafe on second floor always can be so brutal. I mean, we saw last week Cafe played with uh, ISO and I believe that was Cal being able to force a defuse with no line of sight on him, unfortunately, due to displacement from the second floor. So, I mean, or third floor, I should say. So it's if we get there, I'm excited to see what both of these teams will pull out for second floor because that tends to be quite the doozy. Oof. Yeah, we saw the defense uh, clutch up as it does. Normally on most maps, it is very defensive-sided still, but... Yeah, last week's cafe was a very defensive-sided nightmare, I guess I could call it, because it was kind of a mess, like, surrendering a lot of the pressure, but it still ended up working somehow, so... It'll be nice to see how these defenses work around and how the attack, obviously, plans to penetrate it, and maybe we'll even get to see some diffuses, uh, some diffusers planted this time, because that surprisingly doesn't happen a lot. No, anything can come and go. But with that said, folks, we are going to get into our first match. So good luck, have fun to both teams. And for everyone watching, strap in. We're going to be in for one heck of a night and possibly a long one, too. Heard some calls. This is going to be a close one. But yeah, Clubhouse, that's going to be map number one. A bit of a default kind of pick. It's definitely among the top three picks of Clubhouse, Oregon, and Chalet when it comes to comfort. But Clubhouse does have a few chokehold point or choke points for site picks that can make things a bit spicy. And that is going to be your CCTV and your bar. If you see those map or sites picked, things tend to get a lot more interesting as that starts to lean more on the attackers if the defense doesn't have a solid plan. So Doki Ying bands? Is that what I'm seeing? Doki Ying? I mean, it's been the most prominent thus far. Most likely, we're going to see, yeah, Ying. Doki, Azami, Solus. That's pretty much what has been the most common. Although we've been seeing some powerful shield plays, so maybe a Monty ban, but no. it doesn't look like that'll be the case. We're gonna be going for the most common comfort bans, but I feel like that will change a lot next season, especially with Azami. I think she's probably not gonna get banned as much. Maybe I could be wrong. But being able to destroy those barriers with bullets is quite the nerf, if I should say so myself. But speaking of Azami, she doesn't have, or they're currently bulletproof walls at the moment, so Azami's still going to get banned. Being able to recreate some crazy cover points is a bit of a strong mechanic. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. That's. Yeah, she's just, she's a very strong operator. And with that. Ladies and gentlemen, it will be the full defaults. 
with musk and gum or just musk finishing out with a solo span what do you think we're gonna see for the first site basement maybe a first floor it is good. I was going to say basement. These teams like to open it up on basement, get things rolling, and then usually bring it to CCTV. Just get the two strong sites out the way first, and then probably bedroom, <laughs> and then bar. Yeah, it, it's the mm, bar. Well, you should have to run bar unless you really don't want to run CCTV. Defenders, but I think protect that comes your bombs from I would run bar if you know it well enough, just because CCTV has been played to death. And because of how many hard walls there are, uh, pretty much, you know, from the garage side, it can be kind of uncomfortable, you know, trying to contest that as a defender. And everything otherwise, sidewise, is pretty much open, the walls in between. So I would run bar, but, you know, it is a safe bet to go basement. You typically cannot go wrong, because on Clubhouse, you want to pretty much scrap up every single round you get. You don't want to be given away rounds. That's where you start running into a lot of trouble. New camera so feed up and running. If musking on go for a musk attackers are moving. Musking on the bomb. I don't know at this point. I'm trying. <laughs> we say it every single way we can. We could never be wrong. So. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We'll get it right eventually. We'll get one of those right at some point. But as I was finishing up. If you can get this defense round, that'll at least deny SAU from having a winning strategy. As we see, just gonna go for a part. Actually, this probably is just gonna be a full tomp down here as all of SAU have made their way up to the roof. So, gonna just, yeah, just a clear down, get second floor, get first floor, figure out their own basement. Yeah, I mean, nothing too crazy so far. Looking pretty standard here the top down, but must not really matching up to SAU on the top at all. Pretty much giving this to them. I wouldn't say for free. They did have some players there, but falling back early on. So, I mean, that is going to give them more time to clear this. Usually you want to kind of put some kind of pressure to make them the slow force the attackers to slow down, but that that's fine. You know, a minute and they're just now getting the first floor, but we are going to see a fast push from SAU down main stairs putting media pressure and there's someone, oh, barely misses the Valkyrie, misses Lucci, but are uh, rotating down the hall. That would have been a devastating first pick here. It's looking really quiet so far. That is what we call a timing in this in Valorant, or as I know it, that's called timing, and you get screwed over by it pretty frequently. Oh yeah, it's definitely a seated by attackers. Too. But so far, still no picks. I mean, we're down to a minute, 13 seconds. It's still looking quiet. Just, I mean, they're getting their setup, but not much to show. Like, Ooh, cheese curl didn't clear the right side, and that's going to be a nice little peek hole that Doobie's gonna take advantage of to get first blood here, and a nice swing or countered there, and Doobie's got a double kill to open this round. Yeah, and Lucci's gonna go down as well. Bradfin's gonna be taking that. Now with 27 seconds, looks like SEO has been able to slowly pick off Musk here, and now with a 2v5, they should have full clearance up with Musk. So from Jail coming in, and double doobie to take the triple kill here going ballistic it's now all up to reserve we'll have to try to test moto but it seems like doobie is looking for another 4k knows there's a player there the nade has to run out gonna be completely vulnerable here as the plant does go down no it does right position but does manage to stop the diffuser it's just a little bit has dropped that swings out it's gonna be brad pin but reserves will be able Ten to win that for triple kill are we seeing a potential ace here seven seconds left gonna have to Attackers stay to the fuse here user is gonna go down tries to shoot the local force out that information does spot that bar player doesn't manage to get any damage here 35 seconds remaining he's gonna have to push that he knows there's one by the half bar he's going to get away that position but still manages to down doobie it's all up to cypher here oh when he does catch him Playing very patiently by the motor memorial room. Oh, could have been absolutely. I mean, that would have been a devastating way to kick off the game if you go five v two, five v one, and give up an ace to lose the round. But had to clear too many angles there, and it's gonna come to bite reserve in the butt. And it was a good start for SAU. 
three picks as they got full control of basement pretty much immediately once they I mean, once they got doobie down there it was one two three on the kills and then they tried to push in get the pressure and reserve somehow able to dodge two frags and find a response yeah no sau played that pretty much perfectly they were so patient and waiting for must to pretty much show themselves out and ideally in my opinion that's not something that you typically want to happen when you are getting to that point where stuff's happening. But to be fair, SAU pushed down main stairs very early on, which is typically way, you know, make sure there's not someone flanking from some weird position like blue stairs or something like that. But instead, they often just walked out there. They knew that must have fallen back very early on. And because of that, they were able to catch SAU complete, or I'm sorry, catch Musk completely off guard, but they were just not prepared for the early main positioning that they had. That's a sign of good things to come if you're SAU, instantly breaking the defense down and picking up a crucial attack win. Again, the 2-1, the traditional split that we see four attackers defenders. So to start off a game with a win actually puts you in a really strong position to potentially break that trend, especially now that you force them off to a different bomb site. No, absolutely. That's kind of what's so important the fact that, you know, you've gotten your win, or win condition so early on. You know, you didn't have to lose rounds to get it. You already have that. And the fact that, you know, they've already figured out how Musk is going to play. They like to, you know, give a little bit of pseudo presence, you know, phantom presence. But SAU doesn't buy it and then fall back. I mean, look how close everyone is playing except for Cheese Curl. All so close sight. That's going to be a massive problem as SAU continues to be able to, you know, push up early as a result. Cheese Curl is going to need to get some serious impact here. Otherwise, SAU might be on a tear yet again. SAU already have full control of that hall or have vision of the hallway as the bandit tricking does eventually have to stop as j -Bell was forced to back off. So they have hallway, they have vision on bedroom as well. They can start trying to, pos or not position, but start setting up some potential collapse or swings here. If they want, oh, they're going to get rid of that mirror too. So that is a very big chunk of damage going on to Lucian as well. Lucci, as Lucci's going to be downed and reserves going to die in just a second. Not a single shot. I'm bad at this. I'm sorry. Oh, ooh, the revive gets canceled by Brampton spraying through bedroom window. J Ball will be able to trade it back onto Boop. Cheese Curl has found someone, but they're going to be able to just survive and run away. It's 4v1. Cheese Curl needs to find a miracle here to win this round for MU at the moment. And he's going to get spotted from construction window. And it is a easy 1 5 4 SAU. And now they're up 2 0. Yeah, this is typically not the way that attack goes. Usually you have a 3-3, you lose basement, you lose gym and bedroom, and then, you know, first floor is a bit, or not first floor, one of those sites becomes dicey, you know, start picking up a few rounds, and then you end it on a 3-3 split on the second go around. But SAU doesn't have to worry about that. I mean, they've won the Attackers strongest sites on the basement and gym and bedroom. This is putting them in a very comfortable position, and it's not only the fact that they're winning, they're winning these rounds in a very rapid fashion, and this can create a, a point of frustration for Musk, you know, having to deal with the fact that they're basically getting sweet as of this moment, you know, only taking one player is really unfortunate for Musk. And it can kind of make it difficult to ascertain what needs to be done, what changes have to happen, because it's all occurring so fast, giving such little time to, you know, to work these things out and Five to go. Maybe it's time for an early timeout. I'm not sure. No, all I know is SAU just won a round without having to enter the building in, like, at all, and that's not a good sign usually. Yeah, if you're getting flushed out that early, it's that's kind of a sign that you're trying to force fights that don't necessarily need to happen. If that's what you're doing, and it's not working, that almost shows a sign of desperation, which I hope that's not the case. I really think this is just, you know, early round flukes. We have seen this happen in Midwest R6, but either way, you know, SAU now knowing how Musk is going to play this, and their composition basically the exactly the same the only thing that's going to really stop them from entering the building which you said was not or you pretty much called was not a huge factor 
and SE winning that round is a bomb fast, has been located. But, I mean, again, is that really what you want to go for? Because that just means you're going to be playing even more passive. Which I think is the wrong answer. So that's the impact that you're looking for. Oh, if they. I mean, oh, shoot. I was going to say, they didn't go for it, but they actually did end up zombieing it. Oh, that's already one down. They found the bandit getting. They're trying to trick. They knew he was going to hang around there, and J Val pays the price for committing to a strategy too hard. Yeah, and it's not going to really work much. I mean, one four, minute, 45 seconds, that's not a lot of time stalled. And with the walls fully open, both sides, this is going to allow for a relatively safe entry from Cypher if he chooses to push out from that direction. And I mean, losing a Nitro play like that, really unfortunate. It's, it's looking a bit tough. You know, that's why I said it was a problem that they knew how Musk was going to play it, because they're just going to do stuff like that. Oh, Doobie finds Lucci, and now it's a 5v3, and the pressure is coming up for Muskingum. They need to really find a way to reassert themselves, and that'll be a nice Fenrir blind as Reserve will pick up the first kill for Muskingum in two... Eh, no, not in two rounds, but only their second kill of the game, I believe. Fender no, I'm combined. lying. <laughs> oh, but he's still popping off with Cheese Girl and Reserve. There's the roam that we needed to see. There's the presence, you know, to turn this around. They are able to get active against SAU, get a lot of punishment out of it. Now it's actually in Musk's favor here. Having an extended roam, having two players, these girls and Bones, was huge. Oh, but Reserve wasn't ready, and neither was Cheese Curl for a Attackers double kill. Two the picks user. all around. And now it's all, all up to Bones to try to save this. He knows he's still one outside the bow, still takes that fight. Cypher. Trying to go to plant, but does cancel it out. Drops the hatch, and now that's going to be a free plant potentially for Cypher. As Bradton's going to be able to walk in as well. Get a bit of a crossfire going, but they might not know that he act she actually dropped. Oh, maybe they did. We do have one chasing from below. Looks like that's going to be, I think that's Cypher. But Bone's going to now start to make a push up through bedroom hallway. Doesn't have a lot of information on where any of these players are. There's still one. Attackers out about, and now the one from bottom sta stairs. Tries to see for Jim. Goes for the run out. Ooh. Looks the wrong way. Not going to be a clutch there, I'm afraid, as SCU takes another round for now having a three worst case scenario split. And that is already better than you usually expect to come into a game, just assuming the average. So now SAU very, very comfortable in this position, and Muskingum are in a tough spot. They were definitely not expecting to come in, lose three straight on... And after pulling it back in round three, it looked like they maybe had an angle, and they'll finally go to CCTV. I was intrigued by the Defender, double bedroom pick, actually. Yeah, I was kind of surprised considering how fast, you know, that loss came out. But you got to keep in mind, what other options do they have? You know, CCTV? Eh? Bar? Eh? Like, that really depends Literally. on, you know, how familiar Musk is with it. Because that can either go pretty well or absolutely horribly. And the fact that Musk has been avoiding it, that tells me that would go probably really bad. You know, usually you want to pull a map like that if you've got it in your pocket round one looks pretty good. You pull that as a momentum breaker without forcing a timeout, except when you critically need it, but I guess that's not really an option for Musk, unfortunately. Maybe they'll be able to, you know, play a bit more active around the sites, because you can't really hunker down here, but if not, uh, this might look like a round win without really entering the building. Would possibly be no bandit trapping available, but they do have a Kaid that can simply be checked out here. They have a Thatcher again, and they might just use the Thatch to put pressure. They might just open this wall to scare Musking and make them look at this wall, wall as they now know Kaid is hiding on the stairs, so can yeah, possibly use that to their advantage. Yeah, that is some good information, but I mean, again, like, look how far back they are from the site. This is kind of scaring me, because this makes me think that SEU is just going to run it down, because we've seen how they oh. are passive, and it's already starting. Doobie going to take Cheese Curl very early on into the round, with active utility still in pocket. Bomb that's going to be out of the round as well. And I mean, you only have really reserve on site, or at least that's how it looks so far. SEU could possibly run this down. I don't think there's anyone Falcon either. We will see Bones now back over as well. Fleeg's going to go down. I think that might have been from a that, Nitro. That has to be cap can That's a cap can. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the cap can. Very unfortunate. Oh, there's Doobie getting 
his picks in yet again, taking another player down. He's one right now, what a menace. And That's we already gone. see Doobie who's on site. Look at that. If they can get boot in as well, that's going to be the plan. But having that site pressure already is going to be really bad for them. And there's really no one from Must to answer for it except from top red stairs. This is not the situation you want to be in. Oh my gosh, boot takes oh, a lot of damage, oh. but Doobie will be able to get a triple kill. Takes another boot, will finally go down as well as low HP. And we'll see the quad kill from Doobie. Are we going to see an ace? I mean, he's just ran down site and has done so much damage. Yes, we will. No. Wait, okay, it says flawless. No, he eight. does. Oh. He actually gets the ace. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was just... Did Musk and I... What was their plan? They immediately surrender all of b site pretty much. They kill off their kill leader in reserve instantly, and... They didn't Doobie's just allowed to hide on site, either. yeah. Doobie's I... allowed to hide on site. Yeah, I mean, I'm not one to, you know, rip on teams. That's not really what I go for, but I'm really confused on what must approaches they're playing pop and <laughs> chrome on my body oh, my yeah, my crafted well, man. <laughs> but i mean what what confuses me is they're playing passive and typically when you play passive you have one of two intentions it is either to go for a retake post plant or it is to play close to where they're going to be pushing from not exactly fully backing off and then kind of going for a sudden crossfire that they can't really adapt to. But we're not seeing either of those. So I'm wondering what's ha what's happening here. What must approach is. Because whatever it is, unfortunately, their strategy is not working very well. Playing passively is causing them way too much damage. Because either, like you said, they just get sight, like we saw with Doobie and the Ace. Attackers Walking need to locate and defuse as many bombs as they and can. And the only reason the plant didn't go down is because he didn't have defuser before. Or, you know, what we saw before, you know, a basement falling back to site very early on and then I getting crushed in the execute. I really want to root for Mud, but I don't see the vision. Yeah, it's pretty much just been she or it's been J Ball, Bones, and Lucci go off site. They play on specific push angles that they think possibly will be contested to try and get a cheeky pick. Reserve and uh, reserve and bone or either bones or cheese curl, I guess, whichever one usually is playing a site sitter. They just sit on two separate sites, one covering each, and if one of them get pushed, they it's kind of a tough situation. Attackers are heading out to defuse yeah, the bomb. No, very tough situation, but I mean, we gotta keep in mind this is SAU's pick. That is a uh, important fact. So I mean, you know, it could very well be that SAU is just very familiar with this map. You know, spent an extra time making sure that they learn it well and good. But I mean, still, with it being one of those, you know, top three most played maps, it's usually even if it's one team's pick it usually is a bit closer but i mean sau they've had very strong executes and even when there is a roam that hurts them a good deal they're still keeping close they're still playing together and gathering some much needed information not really giving much much of an opportunity to you know play any of those off angles or what would be considered rad angles that would possibly throw a team off if they're improperly prepared Indeed. It feel uh, yeah, as you were saying, it is one of the top three maps played this season. It has 35 games of it total, which doesn't mean everyone's been playing it, but if it's this popular, you should probably generally know what you're doing, even if you're not the best at it. Yeah, either that or you, you know, learn the less popular maps and get those more popular maps I won't out of let the way. This that one is a strategy away. that we see, usually reserved for later on, so it's not revealed what the Already. less popular maps are that the teams are going to be running as we see others getting eliminated. But once again, SAU pushing down main stairs very early on, hoping to catch one. That's going to be Fleegs holding that main position, but Musk knows that they like to do this, so this could be possibly where Musk picks up rounds as long as they don't give themselves away. They catch the free play C4, that is going to be huge, as that does look like that could be part of Musk's strategy to try to deny the setup, punishing them as they go as much as possible, but that's just one piece of the puzzle now denied, but we do have Reserve and Cheese Curl both holding by blue stairs. This could be massive in providing some pressure on the setup here. Knock, knock! Raptin is preparing for at least one of them to be trying to hide over there, and it's just covering this angle in case they decide to rush out. Fleegs has a good sight line on to onto B site right now, but doesn't spot anyone. Doesn't get spotted himself. They're just waiting 
for the signal really to push in or to find a pick as Doobie is going to get sniped, but it's going to be a trade one for one. Lucci and Doobie down. It's 4v4. Oh, barely exposed himself, but Fleek still catches it anyway. Just a little pixel in the head, and that's all you need. 25 seconds okay. remaining. They're kind of bunched up over by all these guys. Spot in it or off the BP. They know one swing and Fleek's gonna sustain a lot of damage from reserve, but he's gonna be tucked in the corner here. 50 seconds to go. They're gonna have to remaining. execute. Fleek's gonna go down, but Bradfin will be able to take J Ball. 10 seconds remaining. Push out and the execute is gonna have to start. And we'll see the half drop, but Brad Pitt will get caught Five out. Five seconds, seconds remaining. Gonna have to go for the plant and the swing onto the half bar. One second remaining. Plant not gonna no. go through and the push on Cypher for a double kill for SAU to save the round when the execute looking a little bit rough. Oh my goodness, that was getting intense. It looked like possibly Muskingum had forced a mistake out of SAU. They were playing a little too slow and they were able to get the picks to keep the numbers even, but then just that nasty swing right there by Cypher. Oh my goodness, absolutely filthy swing. Just, I mean, I guess he knew that there was the, the Bones was Tunnels had to, or I guess that was Cheese Curl last round. They keep switching off the Legion, it's weird. Yeah, no, for sure, but I mean, Defenders, protect I kind of see where Musk was going attackers. with the, you know, having two armory. They had, they literally had, you know, I believe that was Cypher opening up that rotate, or not Cypher. It was uh, Fleek opening up that rotate. That could have been a huge problem of being able to run the ball. So I do see the cover there, but unfortunately, armory just got a little bit more than they could swallow. Unfortunately for them, I say you look really good with a 5-0 for their pick. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a cleaner pick, you know, map. 10 seconds left. Five, oh yeah. Usually you come, again, yeah, come into these games expecting a somewhat even split, but 5-0 is making you, you're in a real good spot right now. You only, you can go in, I mean, 5-1 is a dream half pretty much for most teams. Oh, absolutely. So, if you get 5-1, you're sitting quite comfortably. And we're gonna have leagues on the uh, gross. I mean, go, yeah. go <laughs> Disgusting, but he's yeah. playing it. Oh my god, I just realized boots on the fuse and oh my they, gosh, they know they're in CCTV. Oh. I I love this unique composition. They have Osa, Grim, Fuse. No like, way. They don't have a single meta op except for maybe Grim, and I'm all for it. They will be able to get that CCT wall open. They're gonna be able to clear a lot of utility off CCTV. Or, I'm sorry, that was a hard wall breach. I thought that was the uh, pucks. He hasn't sent out a single puck yet, but I love how they are set up. They are waiting to just run this down. And they have the glass, too. This could be really bad. As Must does oh, this not is filthy. have a warden. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be an interesting run. And with the sense, I mean, that's a pretty powerful combo having sense and glass as a pair and i mean they're both watching similar angles so this is going to get real interesting when they do choose to execute but it does look like grim is going to try to flank around bedroom not a bad backup in case things go a little bit dicey less than ideal oh Brappen starting to push in he's got the smoke to cover but there is a balcony player oh there's one lower garage too does manage to take him and runs away with that free pick the nitro to try to recuperate but it won't come through Oh, and that was a tough one. Just, I think they missed every shot on the smoke and just one click is all you need. Honestly, I don't think they expected him to be successful that much, but look at who's pushed up as well. Who's going to be creeping up. They know, oh, though. but he's ready at the last second. Reserve the take up. They still haven't planned their smoke execute. They might be potentially changing it up. But they really haven't done much in that regard yet. Oh, maybe not. Here comes the sense. And the Bram is going to spot two of them. They know where he's at, where they're at. Tries to push out, but gets caught. The plant now going through. Lucy will be able to get revived here. And we do see Fleeks starting to walk Attackers up. will be able to take J-Ball, who's trying to stop the Fuser. Plant now down. And with a 2v2, still anyone's around. But they're going to have to push out from Cash for Musk. There's going to be one foul. All sides are going to be slowly creeping up. Spots the Luchi? He didn't respond to that at all. Luchi didn't hear. He had the suppress. Oh yeah, that's Luchi didn't hear any didn't have any trackers on his on his uh screen, didn't hear any gunshots, so he didn't know. Yeah, that's really unfortunate with Fleek. That's for Jake. <laughs> we love oh, our director uh, JD. But yeah, that's gonna be a 6-0 for SAU. They are uh, looking quite flawless here.
I think this is the first time this season um we're going to match point on the first round of second half. <laughs> yeah, Musk has a lot of work to do here if they're going to come back. It's yeah, this is going to be a really difficult situation for them to get out of. I mean, now you're on attack. Attackers need to locate and defeat. That's Bob. usually or that's very uncommon. What more likely happens if you're going to pull a 6-0, it's going to be on the defense not on the attack so i'm very concerned from boss on winning this map i mean all it takes is one mess up usually you know you want at the very least a 5-1 so you know you have some room for error but that's not a pleasure that musk has unfortunately oh it is uh <laughs> I mean, you quite literally need to match the efficiency that SAU had on their attack to even have a chance of winning this game. And remaining. as you said, one slip up, it is all for naught as Doobie is, is Doobie running out. Doobie's running out. Oh, yes, he is. What a menace. Aww. 11 and 3. He wants more. He knows this game might be ending soon. Oh, my gosh. And he does no. get one. No, he takes oh. another. There's a second repel. What is happening? That's so disturbing. And Brad Pitt takes one too. Three Do down, know? and they're not even in the building. Didn't even get a refrag on the repel. Oh, oh my I'm god. I'm so sorry, but this is tr very tragic for them. Doobie is the just showing off. He is yeah. just showing off at this point. 13 and 3 on the game. My goodness, this guy's pomping. Yeah, he wants those kills, and now Muskingham is very paranoid, playing very cautiously, waiting for SAU to get active again. But, you know, it was kind of funny because I was going to mention this, assuming that all didn't just happen. I was going to say that the problem is Musk or SAU is probably not going to play passive on their defense like Musk, so it's going to be an uphill battle. But, I mean, we're not even going to really see it as they just peek everything off the rip and we might see that again with brad pin holding out. by the bow from cctv waiting for either j ball or bones to get up oh, 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 we'll take one here's the run out there it is leagues as well just holding but he or oh, brad pin will get taken down from cctv he's the last one alive but it is a 1v3 i mean we've seen close to miracles and i mean we've even seen an ace from Doobie, so maybe J Ball could win this. Not gonna say that it's over, cause remember, folks, it's never over until it's over. Siege is one of those games where things can get really crazy very fast, and he's got quite a lot of time, one minute to eight seconds. But at some point, he's gonna have to make some critical decisions and do it back. Oh, but it won't matter, cause Pleegs is holding prone for the drop. Look so at foul. <laughs> and that is gonna be a perfect game. For SAU 7-0. Oh my goodness, that was not what I was expecting coming into this series. That was no. Uh, yeah, I mean, we were kind of expecting that it, most of these games were gonna be really close, but that didn't end up being the case for Clubhouse, unfortunately. SAU, that was their map pick, of course, and they were showing how how confident they were on it by just bowling over and that pulling out just i mean again you're up six nothing match point you run out with a warden double double kill on a repel i don't even know what to say anymore i yeah that was really rough and i mean that was the thing musk played passive against a team that knows how to get the you heard that too right yeah i was okay mm. we're gonna move on from that very promptly yeah, but uh, uh, moving on from that, or I that might have just been on our end. You guys might not have heard that, but I mean, yeah, SAU, they don't play passive. And with Musk giving SAU so much space, it just, it doesn't work when you have such strong executive capacity such as SAU. And every time that they go for an execute, they have someone posted early. This is a mistake that a lot of teams make on attack. They get so focused on attack or their setup, right, that they don't really have, you know, someone there, and that can result in somebody being a little bit closer than you'd like to be them to be in the execute. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what 
SAU had accounted for, and they always had a player close, managing to catch someone, managing to get their execute pretty much perfectly in sync. There's no delay. There's no, you know, a few seconds pushing down to get to the action. No, they're right there. And Musk, unfortunately, was not able to really handle that as far as clubhouse concerns. But we are now moving on to Musk's pick, which will be Chalet. So with that, folks, any last thoughts on this map before we move on to our quick break? I should mention that uh, Zmart is not playing. I, I noticed Bones was in, but did not mention yeah, that at the start of the game. So uh, top fragger, or top KDA at least, not on your roster for today. Yeah, and that's really unfortunate, you know, losing a player like Zmart. But with that being said, we're going to go on a quick break, and then we'll be on the chalet. We'll be right back, folks.
Hello and welcome back for game two, Midwest R6, Muskingum versus St. Ambrose, a Z-Martless Muskingum, I should probably mention. As we saw, St. Ambrose 7-0 them on the first map. It was SAU's map, but it's not the best option. And now we are on to Chalet, where Muskingum will fight for the match to force a game at three. Yeah, and I do want to point out, and this is what's so unfortunate, Zemar was the fire to mu uh, to Musk Musk and Gun Black. 2.5 KD, 67.23 rating, and he's gone. That's a hard pill to swallow. So you got to give them a little bit of, of uh, a break, you know, knowing that one of their star players, and by such drastic you know statistics is out of the picture really unfortunate but you know what can you do sometimes that happens i know when i played for bradley that happened and there's not a lot you can do when worst player is gone it was rough, it was rough. Let's see is it dokiing it's dokiing welcome back to oh this is this brings back some good pro league memories of the same four picks every game and it made me want to it made me sad because it was boring Oh, yeah. No, it, it can get boring like that sometimes. That's why, you know, meta for Siege is more important than for other games because if the meta gets stale, boy, can it be a slog. And we will see a Fenrir ban instead of the classic Azami and Solus. Maybe SAU will pull out a more unique ban, but can't blame Musk for the Fenrir ban. We did see a good deal of Fenrir from both teams with good impact, but I feel like... I don't think we got to see a good deal from Sao, considering they was, had one round of defense. Yeah. But Reserve had really good Fenrir rounds. Almost picked up the ace to kick off the game, remember? Oh yeah, no, absolutely. So I'm kind of confused that Musk would be the one to go for that ban. I really... Well, Sao are starting on defense, so maybe they feel more pressure to get rid of it yeah. this time? No, and, I, and that could also play into the map, too. I mean, there's a lot of corridors where a Fenrir can just ruin you if you don't spot it and you, there's nowhere to run nowhere to hide a fenrir in the middle of those long corridors will be the death of you for sure because it's attackers gives need off to that locate signal, and defuse it lets them know hey this device is going off and you're exposed you can't see a gosh darn thing you don't have immediate fallback yeah it's it is really devastating to get hit by one of those at the wrong time so i mean God, that, that regard, i can see the ban but i don't know i feel like when that was one of your star operators it's really dicey to ban that star operator pick even if it is strong on the other map and it's their pick too which is also kind of really confusing you know? yeah it is kind of a where uh siege and other uh, hero based shooters like Overwatch, Val do have weird ban situations where it's the only game where you take away a character for yourself but also your enemy. So it's like you have to really be certain you don't want to play it or you have a really good player on it and that the enemy doesn't get it. So it's kind of a double edged sword sometimes. Yeah, no, for sure. And I feel like the other end of the double edged sword is going to be a bit sharper than the end pointed towards SAU. But we'll see whether that remains to be the case. We haven't seen the mix. quite yet. No initial entry. Not gonna see SAU getting active like they did on their on their defense from last game. So that's a definitely a more calming change of pace, I would say, because that was gut wrenching for sure. Oh, the drone does spot Doobie. I think. I don't think he knows. Doobie, why spotted. do you have the pit? Oh, wait, he has the. No way, he hit one of those. Dude, I'm telling you, Muzak does so much damage. Oh, and there it is. There's the first pick of the second match. SAU boots to take. It. Cheese Pearl, and that is going to be one of their entries now out of the count, not even a minute into the round. Does look like Reserve still trying to put up a fight, but I also want to point out that Double Doobie only hit one shot on Reserve, but he did like half health. Oh and my he's down. gosh! This is what I'm talking about. The Muzak is like the most underrated pistol on Earth. It is disgusting how much damage it does. Two tap onto Reserve, and he's down. But not out. he knows everyone's around to help too. He knows one's oh, around to help at least. Be devastating. He oh no. Sense. No. Is he gonna go for the runner? Oh, that's oh. why he's using the music. Oh, that's he's got the cool. shotgun holding by the window. And there's no nades either. This is so scary. He does vault away. We'll be able to shoot out the 
uh, the Yana clone, but they, I mean, it's a minute, 13 seconds, and Moss doesn't even have any building presence yet. Look, they're all outside, and it's just Doobie holding them all off for such a long time. I mean, a minute remaining, they have no setup. They, they have four standing out there. Yeah, they're still out there. <laughs> they're all standing on the same entrance. Oh! What a shot, Doobie! How are you gonna do it to them like that? He's gonna do it again? Oh, I no, thought he got he it. I thought he got he it. it. Oh, but oh. Bones will be able to spot one player in Kitchen. That's gonna be Bradford. There's a lot of damage out. This is not looking good. Both players over by Kitchen. And they have 33 seconds of training. They got to say this player goes party catches Whoa. both of them? Yes. SAU, what are you doing to Musk? This, you can't demoralize them like that. That is dirty. Being able to deny them and not even give them the chance to walk in the building. Doobie has been a menace. A great double kill to close it out. Just really good positioning. But Doobie, oh my god, run out double kill to kick off the last offensive round and to start this map pistol peeking three taps reserve off the map my goodness yeah and we actually just got some background information about the muzak from production <laughs> thank you for that five oh. damage per shot this is what i'm talking about when i say that pistol is so underrated that damage is stupid i was gonna stupid, say ladies and gentlemen i was gonna say why isn't doobie whipping out the ump here the pea shooter I was like, oh yeah, he has the shotgun. And then seeing how he plays with the music, it's like, maybe he doesn't even want the pea shooter. That thing does more damage than it could ever. Right. I mean, what's the point of the UMP when you have the music? Music meta anyone? I I would be okay with that. I love that pistol so much. It's one of my favorites, along with the RG15, which I believe is what Cypher Five seconds is uh, running with. Insertion. It might be a different oh, the, I love the pistols with sights built in. They're just so nice to Attackers use. Attackers are moving oh, out yeah, to locate a bomb. And I mean, some of the best clips that I've ever seen in Rainbow Six Siege was from players going Ella with the RG15. So, so Shotgun nice. mute. Love it. If you've talked, if you've watched my cast from week one and two, you know I love shotgun mute as a filthy mute main. Love just oh, yeah. sitting on site and two tapping people. That shotgun is terrifying, though. From the sound it makes, I mean, it'll sh it'll send shivers down your freaking spine hearing that. So I mean, who couldn't love it? I believe that's the M5. I can't remember which. It's one of the Mossbergs. Like yeah, it's, I know it's a game. Mossberg, I just can't remember which Is it 580? I actually I think, don't remember. No, I think it is. I think you're right. I'm pretty sure it's a 580. But with that being said, we are going to see a lot more in-building presence this time around from Bust as we have Cheese Girl already by the main lobby Falk so early on. This is a lot better progress being able to push uh, in like that. I'm yes. surprised SAU gave them so much space over by library. Then again, they are from kitchen side, but usually you have at least one player there, you know, trying to stir a little bit of worry. So I go for the pre fire onto the rotate. Uh, you might want to stop spraying that. That recoil is a bit rough. Not saying the recoil control, just a recoil on Zofia. Is that the three uh, times as well? Yeah, so it's yes, going to be a bit is. of a strong one. Is gets tagged from the bed. Are you kidding? Some of these oh, bullets they're landing. It's not that much damage, but jeez. No, but I mean, if that was a headshot, that would have been tragic. You know, tries to Bomb clear that with the pre fire. You know, has a semi confident idea that it's clear and then just gets caught Oh, but cheese curl will be able to catch out Brad Pin, who was the player holding a Oh, that was the Uzi. Yep, that's Uzi gone. And it's looking a little bit better. One minute and eight seconds remaining, but. Oh, and there's Drafton from Beyond the Grave getting a kill. From Beyond the Grave, indeed. And to die to one of those mines. That is one of the most tilting ways to die, I'm telling you, because. It's there's so much time to get out of it, but if you're stuck in a rocket hard place, it's just like, why is this thing well, kill at full HP, man? But hey, you know that's why it's trip time is so long. Three seconds left on the clock. Smoke's starting to go out, but Cipher with the warden, he's not going to get yes. impacted at all. If they try to push this, this is going to be really tragic. He's getting ready to push, and he does a lot of damage going out into Lochi, but he's still alive, but a very low HP reserve to take Doobie. If they get this pick, this will be huge, and for their execute, oh, but he does it. He tries to walk up for a plant, and Cypher catches him. A bit of damage 
coming in as Bone or Boots will Bones will be able to take Cypher from above. I believe that was 12 seconds left on the clock. They're gonna have to run in for a plant. They have the horizontal and a vertical pressure. They have everything they need to go for the plant. No, oh, oh, but he's barely exposed with three seconds left. They're gonna have to run and go for the plant, but no one's gonna be able to do it. Oh, but reserve last second's gonna be able to catch it. Goes for the plant. The impact gets thrown. We're gonna see the swing, and there's no cover no. as Boo takes out reserve. That could have been disastrous for SAU. They burn, they burn the C4 on a down after uh, after Fleegs already down the defuse, so they didn't need to use it. But then, oh, that could have been that if Muskingum had cover there because they had to rush in to get the defuser because they had no range, they had no vision, they didn't have the C4 from smoke anymore. So Boot had a rush and there was just no cover for reserve at all and. MU were just seconds away from getting their first round win of the map or the match. No, and he was barely exposed. That's the tragic part. If it wasn't for that time delay, they had such a good situ post plant situation. I mean, they had the vertical cover, they had the lobby, they had full. I just dropped something, my bad. They had full south side control, everything. This is like the ideal post plant. But that small little explosion was all it took and everything collapsed from there. All it takes is little mistakes like that, folks. Ten seconds remaining. And it's over. But oh. moving on, we are now Five round left. three. We're going to see them go to bar and gaming. Doesn't seem like SAE Attack really wants to play, to you know, basement or second floor. But can you blame them? Oh, no, it's coming back. It's no, happening please. again. Doobie's Doobie, mad have mercy. That he's one and two. He's have mad mercy. That he's one and two. He wants his picks. He wants them, but oh my gosh. Look at the composition. Cheese curl. Yeah, I saw the on blitz. blitz. J ball on the Finka. Oh, are we going to get see in there? Rush? We Go. are. Take it away. Yes. Take it away. Keep Attackers Cheese is going to get good. Get in there. Come on. Open that free kiss. Well, they're actually drawing, I believe, right now and trying to see if anyone's on the floor so they can actually go in and rush. We saw a blitz rush last week on Cafe, and it would have worked if they actually covered a fuser. And now, window open. They're rushing in with the blitz. The lion's going down. They know that someone's there, but they have two. That's one blind. They're going to be able to spray through it, but it's going to be a one for one. Another one down. And now it's full control for musking them. They have two killed, one downed. Oh, they're teasing Boot. That's so oh. mean. They're just leaving him alive. But it's all up to this last player, Brad Pitt. Oh, but he spots the fuser before it goes off. Gonna be able to stop that. Oh, oh. the refrag. Gonna stop it. Thanks to... I believe that was Luchi. I... The screen was getting a little low res there. I can't I even tell. I cannot believe that reserve. res worked. That's insane. I oh was expecting... Because usually with that rush, it does not go well. But... That Yes. We see Musk showing up with the attack, so I mean, it's definitely looking closer already. That is the stuff that we, that is why Siege can sometimes Jack be the greatest the game when it's not being the worst game, <laughs> is some crazy stuff like that going off and succeeding. The greatest game when not being the worst game. That's I every game anyone it's... ever plays. I say that about League all no. the time. No, okay, It's the greatest game honest, when it's not awful. To be honest, League actually is just a bad game. Sorry, it is absolutely terrible. Years. And at least you understand why. Only three have been playing it for five. I need to stop. Yeah, like. <laughs> I know I'm going to get flagged for that. There's a lot of calls. Are you? That play League players hate League. I, you know. We hate playing League. But we keep doing it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's how it works. But, I mean, moving on. SAU, they are going to be going to second Attack floor. Finally, coughing up you know, something, or one of the less than ideal sites. Can't blame them. I mean, I would not want to touch that site ever again with a 10-foot pole after what just happened there. You know, being able to bring about a clutch like they did round before and it just gets smashed by a rush, I'd be kind of testy with first floor too. I love that the blitz wasn't even the reason the rush worked at the end. Oh no, reserve just removes Brapton's head. Brapton was camming in the wrong spot and just gets his head deleted from a window. That's a very unfortunate way to go, but you know, you gotta consider where you are when you're going on cams. Otherwise, things like that definitely can't happen. Oh my gosh, and J-Ball to take boot as well. Two very early picks, but 
Please is gonna slap back. Taking out Cheese Curl. That's gonna be entry gone yet again. Three picks a minute into the round. Initial entry denial doing well for SAU, but they are committed. They're trying to deny this. Please tries to pre-fire the double. Won't be able to spot anyone. He knows he's in a rock in a hard place. Still looking to take one, but instead goes for the hat drop. Does take a bit of damage, but does manage to get away. But with those bugs all over him, they know that he's oh, dead. Oh my gosh, what a lineup! Taking J Bugs the repel all the way below. Yeah, he used the soft surface and the scan. What a galaxy brain setup. I never would have thought of something like that. That is beautiful. That is another reason why I love playing pull so much because you can do stuff like that it's disgusting oh this guy's better with the pistol than some people are with the with just any gun like my god uh, yeah no seriously doobie you're an absolute madman yeah he is cooking even if he's two and three he's got the creative plays one minute in remaining. They're gonna have to get on the side eventually. They do have put two players lined up outside of K9, ready to walk in. They also have Breach and a player holding from main stairs. They should have a good opportunity, but that piano player Fleeks could pose a problem if he doesn't overexpose. Oh, they know. They, yeah, they know where this push is from, coming from, and they have a Nitro lined up thanks to Doobie. This could be really bad if if Musk doesn't get this execute going fast quick and efficient they don't clear out this bedroom and piano player because fleegs and cypher are going to be the big problems here if they stall just oh. enough and bones will be able to take fleegs that's one problem out of the way it's all up to cypher on site and or and do be from below. no wait oh he goes to the nitro but is it going to be too late he goes for the plan and he catches it 15 seconds on the half wall but we do see the pick on to be from below it's all up to cypher he does stop the planter it's all up to reserves but he knows where cypher is six seconds remaining nitro still in hand reserve going for the pick but he gets caught out by the goon mine he can't finish the job as cypher takes him out stuck in the corner still manages to force the fight uh Again, musking them so close to getting, I mean, tying this game up. They went from nine straight losses to almost winning back-to-back -back rounds right there. Probably could have had three wins this game already of a 3-1 score. Like, this could be flipped entirely, and it is insane to think that it's come down to seconds. A bad cover oh. on a defuse, and now, oh, that's a C4 drone. I like that. And now it was, oof, a single goo mine. The yeah, verticality, though, is really what saves SAU there. Doobie is the greatest pulse in the world, apparently. Finds a massive pick onto someone repelling outside the building. And then C4 is right where they want to defuse, so... They really need to do get some control of... Some control of the verticality, though. In that situation, it was a bit more difficult, of course, so... It makes sense that they had to give it up a little. you do there with that vertical it did so much work but 10 seconds left in the sau just had a very strong vertical it did so much damage i mean doobie with those creative vertical plays and now he's cooking with echo doobie's back on the echo face person and why is he running the boss g what is what is happening sau acom boss g what do you mean that's game that's gun no, I love Boshi. It's a good meme cannon. Oh, it is. Absolutely. Oh no. my gosh, we see Doobie. Doobie almost <laughs> takes that, but oh my gosh, both being so close to taking each other out. I mean, with an Echo 2? Gutsy. Just straight guts. Tries to take Boone's, Bones' drone. This is it. But he is going to be able to fall back and he's going to be able to act the drone. This is what I'm looking forward to. How does Doobie use his echo cancel? Because if he uses it aggressive in tandem with the rest of the roamers, it could be uh -oh. Uh oh no, oh, no way, no. did he get away? Wait. Okay, he does. Oh, they heard, oh, okay, he gosh. heard it. This is the deployable shield though. That is gonna help a lot for that execute. Tries to get him again, come on. <laughs> they could just keep Pull making Cypher run around, waste you. his time. Yeah, fool me twice. Yeah, shame on me. But yeah, that's he's not falling for that. Wait, so what are you <laughs> Almost, fighting? though, that was looking terrifying when he was on the drone. That was I thought he was going to do it. Oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, no, I honestly thought that too. But 1 minute 47 seconds reserve already starting to make a run in for the balcony. They are going to be able to get that control once again. But with so many players above, it must be able to let SAU get away with having those players below. I, I'm starting to think that might be the case. But then again, 
they don't have as many knives or they don't have Doobie on the pulse. I, and, yeah, I'm, they're letting them get a lot of, uh, or space and there's not much pressure from you know from below you have a nitro player you got solarium you want to answer for tro trophy and exit or they can creep up cause a lot of problems but if musk is confident enough to lock it up over by lobby maybe that won't matter hard to say for sure but brad pink has a has a very long campaign. and mu is kind of in the middle ground right now like they have control of piano but they reserves getting shot at one Oh, reserves downstairs. That's right. I was trying to wrap my brain around it, but it's like they have some players not in, and then they have control of piano fully. So it's kind of a they're in this weird middle ground state right now. Yeah, and they need to get this slam control. I mean, look how many they have. You have boot, leaks. You've got so many players over by Trophy side. They have absolutely no control. They better be confident in this hold. And the worst part is, look at where Doobie's position. Oh, All no. the way in basement. If he creeps up, they go for an execute. This could be horrible for them but to give musk props do they found him phones, pushing him out from the hallway oh he gets isolated Ooh. the cross play there you go musk that's what i'm talking about well 10 seconds left on the clock they still gotta execute and there's still players anchoring on site and they have to go for this plant but please will take one brabbin another reserves go for the one lock or Lochi going for the plant they try to push up but it's unsuccessful no one's able to do it and musk gets their round being able to cut them off for the plant that's how you do it you ignore trophy and you keep a strong lobby control that's how it's Fine. done <laughs> they did use reserve i guess so they got control of piano used that to flush out all of top floor and then they used reserve to get pressure on a potential push into pool room there so they did actually do something with the player outside of this or outside of the building so that was actually a very good kind of collapse they were running and i like it in the end it looked kind of weird while they were doing it, but it made sense afterwards. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Yeah, no, that was real. That was really good from Boss. This is what they need to keep up. Now I think they have attackers located, located a bomb. I think they've got it now. And if they can keep that up, you know, isolating the lobby, and that's the thing that's so confusing to me from SAU. They've been playing really well, but why do they play so passive towards Trophy? The whole point of Echo, in my opinion, from a competitive standpoint, you use those Echo drums to concuss and allow roamers to get ultra aggressive. I mean, basically the defense playing attackers. But five seconds just left before insertion. Happen. They sat by Solarium, sat by Trophy, and attackers let Musk, out to defuse a bomb. you know, isolate Doobie and flush into sight and there's really nothing SAU could do. I'm really surprised that they started to kind of play passive there. I didn't expect that from them. Obviously it didn't work out. It's gonna be interesting to see how they play this out for the rest because I mean Doobie's just a rat player at this point. He plays Echo, he plays Pulse Rat. Filthy rat and he needs to get a bit more aggressive with his rat plays I guess besides his spawn peaks. Yeah, well, I don't know if I would say ratty. The the pulse play was really smart, but what needs that was to be smart, but also rat is using is using that utility to get aggressive. If they just keep playing passive, and it looks like they're doing it again. No SAU. I would have somebody by pool side already, you know, ready to meet them, and it just doesn't. Cipher. Like Cipher <laughs> doing it again. Cipher getting trolled I mean, again. <laughs> No, but look, Cypher still has his deployable shield. He's baiting that He's detail ready. so he can put the shield down later on. That is really smart, you know? You don't always have to throw down your utility immediately. And Cypher recognizes that, knows that J-Ball likes to throw those little explodey drones. I'm forgetting what they're called. Roteros, the Roteros. Why are they named anyways? Take advantage of that. Yeah, no, take advantage of that to... You know, put that have that shield later on. It's better to have a shield later on and execute than not to have it at all. Especially, you know, if it's gonna be this much of a problem, you know, the lobby push and you have as many players in the trophy side as you do. They're gonna continue that passiveness. Reserve just trying to spot anybody out. He spotted Legion, but will he be able to trade it? Fleeks running off to the left side. But he's gonna be able to he's solo. He's one shot away from death, but he's still trying to peek reserve here. There's the impact nade. And he's trying to run out of the bathtub. He tries to rotate. He's stuck in the bathtub. He really needed to kind of run there before getting jumped on. His bones is downed at least. Yeah, that does give him a good deal of damage, and it also leaves a blood as well. 
well part of the rework, but there's really no one from SMU to capitalize on that. I mean, they have full top side control. This all comes down to the execute, in my opinion. Trophy needs to hold off cash, and Cypher, who's now put down deployable shield, needs to be able to hold off the breach. But look at that. They don't even have breach open yet. And still, Cypher, uh, Cy or SMU, they have to they do get that wall up eventually. What? Oh, no! Cypher on goes hatch. down! Boots goes down, and now they have a free opening to push lobby again. The pick from Boots getting secured. 20 seconds remaining. They're going to be pushing this very oh. soon. We do see the walk up, and Brad Pitt won't be able to take one, but Lochi will still be able to go for the plant. Oh no, but there's an echo on sight. That is going to stall the plant. Tries to shoot out the echo, does stall it once again, and now Bradford's going to get active. He does take one, but there's another buff. Oh, but Lochi takes a lot of damage, but he doesn't plant! What? He got hit by another one! Oh my gosh! Doobie oh, had another the drone there! You know, typically, I fault teams for using Echo like that. But I mean, that makes sense. That makes so much sense. Musk waits so long, last second on the execute. And they know that the utility clear on site is a bit weak. And they abuse that. They couldn't plant. Oh my gosh. That's devastating. Having both of the drones there. That's insane. And that makes it, what, three rounds now that Muskingum could have used, or could have won, if it just went slightly different on the last part of the execute? That is brutal. Yeah, that hurts the Steve. I mean, Musk, they played everything so well, though. I mean, I pointed out that the biggest obstacle to SAU with Cypher, and in my opinion, he screwed up by, you know, rotating and putting his shield up where he did, got picked off by the half wall, and that gave Musk all the opening they needed to plant, but the echo. Oh my God. Ten seconds left. That one Ubi literally assault. didn't do anything that round until that. He just sat in basement the whole round. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you don't. Know, move. Out, you know, it is what it is. But, and you know, you know they send four top floor and one first floor. Yeah, you could just sit in basement the whole round. No one's going to track you. Yeah, screw it. I mean. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, I guess. And that's kind of what Gooby went for, even though it was kind of broken. He did. But hey, you know, made it work that time. Musk definitely wasn't ready for the second echo. Kind of crazy to see. But moving on, it does look like we will be second floor with SAU on the, on the swap now, as well as Musk. Let's see, Attackers let's see have how SAU handles their attacks, because their defense is pretty good. But, you know, the 4-2 and the 3-3 is the most standard, and Musk could really come back from the defense as long as they do not play excessively passive. And I am intrigued by the zero pick, because I never know what this operator's, like, optimal goal is to do. I know he lays cameras down, I know he has some fragging potential, but it's just like, he kind of just feels like this weird operator that they just put in the game. I don't know, it just kind of doesn't fit, if you ask me, but I'm also a casual, filthy player, so... I don't say I dislike him, I'm just like, I don't know what his ultimate goal is. Reserve almost clicking ahead there, so close. Oh, but now double peaked! No! It's over greedy, it goes down instead. I like the there. initiative, Ooh. but it's not really working out. Wasn't ready for Fleeks to back up his boy. No way. Oh, I say, there's no way he holds his breach impressive. With that many players, that would have been really bad too. But I mean... One minute, 22, there's not really a lot of players oh. on site. Bones will be able to take Brad Pin though. And there's not a lot of players in the building so far. And they're looking quite comfortable with the minute. Oh, Leaks is Anger. So does Bones next. SAU now looking on top with a two-person advantage. Uh, when you got that many people holding outside and no real building presence, you might as well just sit back, back and have a of time. Ooh, but that does go down. That's going to be thanks to Attackers one of have those recovered their mats. We'll be able to get back up, though. However, we'll just be able to take fleeks. Cypher now going for the play. Gets popped from the window. Repel. They are fully covered. Cypher has everything needed to go for the plant, but he's trying to protect from below. Goes for the pre-fire onto Cypher. They know he's below. He's just running around, stalling that diffuser player. Oh my gosh, and he still gets it. 20 seconds remaining. No way. 
that SCU gives us round to Musk and Ham just by having him below, but it does look like he will eventually push him. He remaining. knows that his luck has ran out. You're not Attackers are activated that the many. bomb diffuser. And the plant does go down, and his, the start of the retake is gonna have to push up a master bedroom. Do they know where he's coming out from, but they do have inform or he, she has- Ubi has a vert, though. On them. Got a lot of pings coming out. Knows that there's one outside window. I don't think she knows about the player below. That could be a serious problem. It does look like we are going to see a run out, but there is a play. Defender exposed. Ruby goes for the run out, but can't see him. 15 seconds on the, on the clock. Attackers He's going to have to make something happen. He tries to force the defuse. It's going to be really ugly. And the two cuts goes out, but he takes one. He could get this. But he does spot from below. She's to run away. Tries to take Doobie out, but it's too late. That's it. I say you to win that round. That was well played there by Doobie as well, knowing not to hang around for too long under the vert because if you die, then you just give away the defuse anyways, even if like you just give away a free defuse if you hang around under the vertical opening for a bit too long. So it is just really well played to try and overwhelm the one player trying to defuse a bomb and it's really hard as it turns yeah, out to defuse had, or to counter defuse of, yeah and they had a lot of post plant options there too they attackers had need to locate the and they defuse as many bombs as they have up of there yeah it's it's really attackers have discovered the location of a bomb but i mean hey way to put up the good fight you know still took one still got some damage onto you know i believe that one but you know like, uh, i mean was oh, it? I can't remember. It might have been Cypher. I can't. <laughs> Doobie was underneath. That's the only one I know. Yeah, hard to say, but I mean, gotta kill at least. Yeah, but as they round so early on, that's not a good sign from the boss. I mean, we can see Matt really is showing the damage. You know, being on attackers are heading out map to map down five rounds is really unfortunate. They're gonna have to figure something out, and they're gonna have to figure it out fast as far as adaptation. Because for Musk to pick up their first attack, or was that first attack? I might be mistaken. But to pick up an attack this early on, regardless, is. Or yeah, no, that was their first attack. It had to be, yeah, because this is eight. Yeah, it's really bad. That's not good. Again, it's all about the success. It's all about the attack figuring out what their win condition is. And now that they know it, the only thing they gotta worry about is what will get in the way of that, which is what you would call your round-to-round -round adaptation. And must better have a good answer because now that SEO knows their win condition, usually that means it's only up for them. But now, I mean, I like SAU's comp quite a bit. They have really good, once they get on the site, they have really good flush there as Reserve is trying to see if they can get a window pick, but I was gonna say they have doobies drones. Oh fleets where the heck did reserve drop? Oh other window double peaked down but she's curled to finish off doobie and it's already a 2v4 fleeks should be in a safe position for a res he is in an awkward spot that's gonna make that res a bit difficult to spot, the, spot the blue player that's a cheese curl and the drop oh never mind i thought that was from blue hall oh my gosh but no i wish not looking to do here a lot of damage coming out cheese girl half hp loki low key, low key I need to on site one minute 23 seconds seu has all the time in the world to get an execute here. It's re it's really hard to see what the answer is going to be for Musk on this mid round adaptation to come back here. Again, the only person you really need to worry about here is Cheese Curl on this run because Luchi's hiding on site. So if you could just get rid of Cheese Curl, you could four v one site here and get your executed. There it is, wrapped in a nice crouch peek there, and now it's Luchi all alone four v one. Going to find the one, but the double team there is enough to put match point on the table for SAU. Yeah, their round adaptation's not working out. SAU just sweeping in. I mean, again, it's the win condition, and they have it. And it seems like now Moss, despite being on the fence, has to figure out their win condition. This is almost as bad as what it was last game. They have to win four rounds in a row in order to really come back here that's that's a tough ask that's really tough i mean the margin of error Attackers is gone need to locate they and need bomb. to do something 
drastic here, but so far from us, their composition looking relatively the same, and they're on the same map too. Attackers have located After a bomb. Such a devastating Mark loss. I hate to call it, folks, but we're looking at a second blowout. Um, <laughs> it's gonna be really brutal. I mean, yeah, you're asking a team that hasn't won back-to-back -back rounds yet this entire series to win four in a row. It is a all order and Muskingum really need to prove that they're up to it if they want to even have a chance at getting map three. Oh yeah, and even then map three's not a five seconds you know, left standard four, map, and then they're struggling with standard maps. What happens on cafe? Attackers are moving to defuse the bomb. Sleep, but they gotta get there first. That is the main thing. Musk has to be able to have that opportunity to show that they can change things up. And they gotta do it now before they even get to Cafe, because so far their adaptations have been relatively minimal and with very little success. Oh my gosh, it looks like they might just go for force here, potentially. And the problem I mean, is they, they don't can. have, they have Capital. Mirror. Yeah, they do have the Capital. They want to get rid of that Mira. The problem too is that you know, you have a war and that's J Ball, but he's not even close to being in the position needed in order to contest this hop in. So if they know where the war oh, he's above. They do actually have a good position for it. But if he gets rushed out, it's all hell is gonna break loose, I'm telling you folks. But it does seem like they might know that Warden's potentially there. I mean they've got plenty of time to figure this out, get rid of oh. it, and they have that hop in if they so do see that Fleegs is now on the bulk. There's still plenty of time for the bulk. Can't see you quite yet. It doesn't oh. look like he'll be there for a minute. Bones will take Doobie. That is gonna be last game's star player. Now out of the way for him. As well as Brad Finn. Is Eric gonna be able to take that from the bulk angle? It's not looking too good for SAU. Must might have a good opportunity for a comeback here. <laughs> Would be an eight. Uh, Fleegs just set himself on fire, it seems. Not an optimal strategy, but. Cooking himself just, up. Yeah, cooking himself up. But, uh. It seems that they're struggling with this entry because Cypher can't use his, uh, Rateros to really flush anybody out of specific angles. Like, they can't get rid of that. Uh, they can't get rid of the player hiding on deployable on Blue Hall because there's a Mute Jammer on it, so they have that angle fully covered no matter what. Yeah, oh, absolutely. They've got well-covered positions, and oh my gosh, reserved for the triple, reserved for the triple kill. That's all the tweaks. He pushes out Mudroom. That's going to give away exactly where he is. 40 seconds, 5 seconds left. Does he go for the force here? With Gordon still above, there's no way he tries it. Does get shot at from j -Ball. doesn't take any Ooh. damage, tries to take the fight, and Musk will actually sustain a flawless round. Okay, this is potential. This is good. If they can slam SAU with rounds like that, I mean, not even losing a single player, you know, they could definitely go overtime. That is... That's, that's good stuff. They need to keep that up. But we only have seen them win singular rounds, so I'm not going to start believing until we can see them chain this one together and then maybe the hope starts to bleed in for Musk fans. I mean... That sounds rough. You're Attackers being need to logical locate and about it. Bomb. And I do agree. You know, they're not looking too hot here. And we have not seen much of consecutive rounds from Musk. But I am absolutely Attackers a have located a bomb. In a comeback story. It doesn't happen very often. Not so much in Midwest R6, but if it does happen, I'm all for it. And I will be tearing up every single second of it. Ooh, Flucci. Bandit trapping again. That is kind of that is one of the downfalls we saw of Musk on Clubhouse was an overcommitting to this bandit trapping that yeah, eventually cost them their bandit. So they gotta yeah. cover. I mean, there's no real angle here that Bandit gets wiped out beforehand, so I don't think it's going to be as big an issue as it was on Clubhouse, which is right next to Jim. So, should be I mean, fine to Bandit trap. Yeah, and they have a player below too. And I don't know. You know, I think the pre place is from above. But if you're gonna have someone tricking, you know that wall is gonna get opened up. They're gonna want that side wall open. So instead of you know leaving it open, leaving that wall in the air open. Just gonna force the wall. They open it up and you have your head high 
right then, right there. I mean, that's that's at least my thoughts anyway. But it's just a matter of how things play out here. Oh, that is a explosive. Yeah, we'll be able to get that Goyo out very early on. Rapin looking for one. My magnet will protect the pie here. There is one close by piano, but nobody from Musk. Activating drone. They got a lot of control from Blue Hall side, so they can push that out quite early. Oh, but reserve is going to get active, pushing out towards the bout. We see a run out, and we <gasps> do as reserve takes out Brad Pitt. He, that is the initiative that must need to have, and it's right there. And so far, you know, SAU has not made significant progress. They do have Blue Hall, but. That was kind of given up by Musk, and they are not letting SAU get any more control over that. And reserve to take yet another. I think that one was from Blue Hole. That's going to be Fleegs gone. That's going to mean all hands on deck when it comes to roaming and lurking, doing all kinds of stupid stuff from Musk. Taking that forward. They're looking real comfortable right now. Take a little bit of damage here. One minute, 20 seconds remaining. They still have an opportunity to come back, but they need to take this space. Waiting for someone from Musk and, Musk and Gum to overpeak, but I don't think that's going to happen. Cheese Girl knows he's kind of stuck in a rock and a hard place, but he's got the support to ensure that he does go down. He's taking a lot of damage. If he goes down, it's not going to look good, and he does. Oh my gosh, but despite that, Cheese Curl takes two. Boot and Cypher down. Do be the last one on Repel. No one's going to peek that. Even if they do, she's low HP. Musk, this is your chance. Overtime. Take it. Do it. Get in there. Come on. This is an insane... I mean, insane pair of rounds from what we've seen from Musk so far this game. It's really the first time we've seen them really get on a tear, swing the momentum in their favor, and make SAU sweat a little bit. And now it is... I mean, this is almost a certain round win. It is barely any health. Zofia versus Fulham, right? Oh, Leisha gonna get shot in the knee a ton, though, and... It's gonna be one shot away from death now. Or down, I mean, not death. That damage is great though, but look where the fuser is. Look how yeah. much we're alive. Try to pass oh. Katie a little bit, does manage Five to get one. They're gonna possibly get another, but Bones isn't gonna give it to Doobie. We know Doobie can get bloodthirsty at times. Operators, but, you yeah, have run out of time. Musk and I'm gonna be able to take that round. And SEU will call a timeout. Now's the time to do it because you have a two round buffer and including this upcoming round so if any time is the time you know to close it out a timeout is going to be a good call for that but gotta admit musk is looking really good here i mean we had a flawless and then only one person down near flawless they're looking really good to come back into overtime but the pressure is still there and now with a timeout in hand this is SAU's last chance to close this out. If they screw up here and go into overtime, we could very well see a map three. I'm just so happy to see that Muskingum finally answer Brampton. Brampton has pretty much been doing this all series, just breaking off second or breaking off balcony windows and just covering those two angles back and forth and He's been really effective at finding picks on rotations, or once SAU put the pressure up, someone's running for their life, and he's covering a lot of angles that Muskingum have really just been giving away for free. They've never, I mean, they once tried to run out on him, but that was a panic play as well after it was, what, 1v4, 1v5 on Clubhouse? So finally, just to punish a very repetitive strategy from Brapton is just nice to match the aggression. Absolutely. Mac Musk making those much needed adaptations. Really putting the hurt on SEU. Like the initial entry, eh, kind of iffy, but Musk has learned that they can sometimes struggle on the initial entry denial, not playing that risk, letting them walk in to a death trap when they try to get more present. But here's where we have a problem. We are now on base. Ten seconds remaining. Basement has a lot of direct entries. And there's not a lot of opportunity to deny from an extension, other than from above. Oh my gosh, but it looks like Musk will still commit to that above hold anyway. They've got Lochi with a mirror looking into lobby. And if they have a proper hold above, which it looks like they do from Cheese Curl and possibly J-Ball, they could stall so much time here. This could be 
Oh I'm my reloading. God, this would be really a good setup to win what would otherwise be a less than ideal setup. I am interested to see how they're going to just deal with the la or if SAU are even going to figure out that they don't have anything covering garage door and just use that to apply some pressure as it is going to still be a top down clear it seems from SAU here and spotting out reserve is not a bad start to that top down. Yeah, but I think SAU is going to be in for a world of hurt. That is a Bomb dramatic adaptation from Musk. I don't know if SAU is going to be ready for this. They are going for the top down, but I'm curious what their intel is looking like for first floor. We do have Boop. He's going to be able to try to grab some information. But oh, he completely misses the mirror. That Oof. could be a huge problem down the line. I mean, look, they Reload. don't have anything that can break that Mira. No Ash, no Cali. This is going to be really tough. Unless they can get some backside control and push out from Trophy over it. Oh, it looks like they where did might Cheese Curl get shot? Taking a lot of damage from Cheese Curl. I, I think that was from Doobie over by Trophy Stairs. We will get the drop wow. down. That's Cheese an ankle. On to sight. But Logi still committed to holding from Kitchen, which is definitely an interesting choice. But there's still really no one to get in her face quite yet. But Doobie starting to make his way up. This could be really bad. That's there to like just see. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's basically an alarm system. But Fleet is going to find the first pick. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. Bones goes down. But Mira now gone. It's 55 seconds remaining. But Fleet is already down. Blue, who's watching Blue Hole? Fleegs is just there, and Lochi was not ready for that at all. That is, oh, that's so unfortunate. But this means that SEU is pushed up so early, and with having that wall open and pushed up, they're now going for the plant with Fleegs to cut off Jade Ball. The plant will go down with a person advantage. Smoke in the way. Jade Ball still up. He can see through that. But this is not looking too good. A triple kill from Blue Hall. That's Fleegs yet again being a menace in Blue Hall. Reserve looking to push up here. And oh, he's not ready for the fight. I think he was reloading there. There's another player, Blue Stairs. Sends off the fire, but it's not going to stop the swing potentially. But he does rotate out. 18 seconds left. This is the last chance to try to save it. Reserve take a lot of damage from Blue Stairs. The triple kill coming out. He's going to have to run through the fire to try to counter this defuse. Does take one. It's all up to Reserve. He's got to stick the fuse or take the fight. He tries to take the fight, but he is out of time. And with that, SAU wins it out. 2-0. Oh my goodness, that was going so... I mean, it went from great to terrible to great again in a matter of seconds, it feels like. Or, I guess, terrible to great to terrible, depending on which side you are talking about. And SAU, I mean, that was a very narrow round win. Such a yeah. narrow way to close it out. Oh yeah, no, that got a little bit messy there. But I mean, Fleegs with the blue hall position... How do you let someone get that far ahead without knowing either Flags or Fleegs is a maniac when it comes to assessing intel in positional gaps or Musk fumbled the bag? I don't know which one it is. I don't want to give SAU too much praise there because that shouldn't have happened. But I also don't want to bash Musk because we don't really know for sure what happened there? That was not the focus. It was the first floor and second floor extension, and Fleet just pops up out of nowhere. And I mean, in such a powerful position. The hype was the hype was building. It was like, oh, Musk are gonna do this. And then you see that double kit, that double swing on garage there, and it's like, oh, two v one. One of you defuse, one of you covers the defuse. And then just running through the fire, Brafton goes for an insane swing and wastes enough time that it was, you have to take the fight or stick to Fuse. And Sal yeah. got lucky there that Musk chose to not stick to Fuse. Yeah, talk about a literal trial by fire for whether or not they earned their right to close it out. And boy, they passed the trial. They made it through winning it out 2-0 in such spectacular fashion. So GG's to both teams. Congratulations to SAU. And coming up next to close out the night, we've got an interview coming up in just a moment. So we'll see you for that in just a moment.
and welcome back for the interview as I'm we learning. have Brapton of SAU again 2-0 to Muskingum just a few minutes ago and welcome to the stream. Oh, uh, appreciate it. All right, I guess we could just kick into this. I think they want to wrap up pretty quick today. So I want to open with a quote. We don't really talk about the quote very often, but uh, <laughs> chrome on my body, call me the man of steel. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, some random in a uh, ranked game kept saying that to us, and he kept saying he had more bands than us, so we decided to use that against these guys as like a funny bit. Yeah, that's oh. a banger. That's, that is a crazy quote. I was thinking about that. I'm like, what does that even mean? But... Hey, you know, rank managed to say some really weird stuff. So, you know what? All for it. But um, I do want to kind of talk about the second game, though. Musk had had a pretty good comeback and a strong adaptation to their strategy. What was kind of going on as far as, like, strategizing and thinking out how to close this out, especially with the timeout? What was the conversation looking like there? Uh, It was me telling these guys how to drone, to be honest. <laughs> I was like, you guys need a drone, uh, one room, let's push, drone the next room after we open the wall, because I was like, why are we still sitting here droning when I'm, like, standing on this balcony? Come on, let's step it up. And then the rounds before that, it was mostly them just, uh, trying to rush when I said, let's not rush, actually, and that just kind of happened, but we fixed it. We were having fun yeah. there at the end. Gotcha, yeah, it was, it was seeming a little scary with how many rounds Must was picking up, but then... Yeah, you guys really focused up on Grad to close that out. So we were kind of wondering if we were going to see a comeback, but from the sound of it, it didn't seem like that was destined to happen, really. Yeah, we're animals. It's, it's top of Div 3, we got to keep it going, right? Yeah. yeah, you definitely killed it in this bracket. But uh, Kimchi, what else you got for him? All right, final play. 2v1, Goyo Mine burning you, it, like... What was the, I guess it was just pure instinct, but just running through the fire to pick up a, a closing double kill. Uh, so I was thinking of the song Through the Fire and Flames and ran through yes. that and uh, I was <laughs> and shot that shot the guy who was looking for the defuse. I don't know why he was running over there like in the middle of open. I don't know why he was already, wasn't already there. And then I just was like, I'm going to drop and hope this Goyo doesn't get the defuse. You know, oh. that kind of almost reminds me of, I'm sure you're, you're familiar with the iconic CSGO play, you know, diffusing through the fire. That's almost what that kind of reminded me of, you know, running through that fire, taking that fight, saving that round, you know, before the diffuse could go off. I mean, that was just great, you know. It was really scary, but it was a good save, nevertheless. But, I mean, what did you think of that setup that they have? You don't usually see... You know, having a mirror looking in the lobby with an extension to support that, that's pretty well spread out. Were you guys ready for that? It didn't seem like the intel was quite there about the mirror initially. Oh, uh, which site was that? Was that the basement one? Yeah, that was the basement one. They had a mirror <laughs> on, or a mirror on the first floor or instead of basement. I was in blue. They didn't tell me about that. I, yeah. I was. They. We didn't even know it was basement, to be honest. <laughs> we just straight up just were like, let's change it up. Let's get Adam. So that we were like, oh, they're going to go back upstairs since they played it the first round. They went basement. We're like, oh, well, let's change it up. Let's get this wall open, drone everything, clear it out. And then uh, everyone kind of happened to pick up kills. My boy Cypher got the plan off or boot. I don't remember which one it was. But they did a great job of getting that and adapting to that. So that was what that was. Yeah, and to that uh, as well, the one big thing I noticed is that you had a huge opening with Fleegs playing by blue hall how did that come to be it's very atypical for someone to be pushed up that far prior to an execute usually you'd see a lot of you know pushback but it didn't seem like it was there uh well fleece is my boy and he happens to just decide to wander off on his own like a child lost in a store and he kind of makes it work <laughs> but he makes it work though he's we he's got he's gotten a lot better at it and when, it, when he was after it, he's after it. So he, he made the play, and I always encourage these guys to make the plays so they can make the plays, and he made the play. Yeah, no, that, that definitely played off. But uh, one question I do want to bring up. ZMAT, unfortunately, was not there for Musk. Do you think that had a huge impact on how the match went? Do you think things would have been different and maybe even a possible loss if he was still there? What are your thoughts on that? Remember, he was the player with a 2.5 KD on their team. He was absent. Uh, well, me and Doobie are after it. I don't, we, we don't, we don't think about what ifs. We think about what we did and we won. So it's, I think we would still would have done fine because we, we were all 
a United team. There's a reason why we uh, kept our number one spot and have been maintaining it this entire season. So we're we're looking okay. good. Also undefeated on maps both leagues. So that's all I'm saying. Hey, a lot of confidence. Got to respect that. Kimchi, any more questions from you? Why is Dubio a wizard with the pistol? He's a rank star kid. He does what he wants. He makes it, I have been yelling at him for the past year about stop doing dumb things, and he makes it work every time, and I can't tell him to stop. Well, I mean, he did close out the clubhouse with that spawn peak on the repel. That was despicable. Absolutely yeah, he, despicable. He, he does that every single time we play that map. It is. He makes it work. And the comments were, this guy's dead, this guy's dead, and then I killed the Ashen Garage, and we're all just sitting there laughing about it. Oh, we yeah. we love Clubhouse. It's our map. We we make that stuff work. Oh, that's my favorite call out. You know, when you're popping out, oh, this Zoe's dead. Oh, Jackal's dead. Oh, dead, dead, dead. It's it's the only call out you need. You're just you're killing. It's that's it what a matters. Classic bolo call. Classic bolo call. Slams them and it just says enough said. Oh yeah, absolutely. You don't really need to say anything else. You're popping off. Let them cook. Focus less on talking. Focus more on taking picks. Absolutely. But uh, with that being said, uh, Kimchi. You got any more? Because I'm pretty much out of questions. That's all I wanted to really cover. Uh, congrats on the win. Uh, thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. You guys really killed it there. But with that being said, thank you for coming through for the interview, Brad, Brad Pitt. And we look forward to seeing you guys and SAU going forward. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, Kim Chi here with Piercing. And this has been Midwest R6. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Enjoy your weekend. And we'll see you next time. Take Shut up, Raptor Zed. <laughs>